Well, hello, um, my name is Simon Duffy. I'm the uh, director of the Centre for Welfare Reform and with Marcus Fahalla, I also um, run Citizen Network, which is a global cooperative whose goal is to create a world where everyone matters. And what I wanted to talk about um, for a little while is the idea of citizenship. Why is citizenship such an important idea? So I've come up with um, seven answers, seven reasons why citizenship is really important. And I was going to talk through some of those things and talk about some of the, the ideas and philosophy behind citizenship. So um, let's begin. I think, I think the most obvious reason why citizenship is important um, is that we, we all need to belong. And uh, citizenship is one way of belonging. Uh, it's also something that can get misunderstood. So um, one way of understanding citizenship is, uh, or misunderstanding citizenship maybe, is the idea of kind of passport citizenship. Politicians are very fond of this idea of citizenship. You're a citizen if you've got the right passport. Um, you're a citizen of the United States if you've got the right to stay there and we need to build big long walls to keep people out. Or you're a citizen of the United Kingdom if you've got the right coloured passport and you protect the seas from refugees. And, uh, and this kind of narrow notion of citizenship is really getting citizenship upside down, but it reflects the truth that we do want to belong. Uh, it's really interesting, actually. Um, a few years ago, uh, our Prime Minister, um, they've changed a lot in the United Kingdom recently, but we had a Prime Minister called Theresa May, and uh, she, she stood up and she said, um, but if you believe you're a citizen of the world, you're a citizen of nowhere. You don't understand what the very word citizenship means. And of course, what she was trying to do in this little speech was to tell all of us who live in the United Kingdom that we should not try and consider ourselves any longer citizens of Europe or citizens of anywhere else. Well, this, this is kind of ridiculous, isn't it? I mean, I'm a citizen of Sheffield, which is the city I live in. I'm also a city citizen of the neighbourhood, which I live, I live in a neighbourhood called Nether Edge. We're in fact all citizens of lots of different things. We all belong at lots of different groups. Um, it's very ironic for the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom even to say that citizenship is just about belonging to a country because the United Kingdom itself isn't a country, it's four countries. England, Scotland, Wales, uh, Northern Ireland, Ireland, um, and everybody who's in the United Kingdom really knows that they're a citizen of one of those places, maybe more than one. I support the English football team. I'm English, although I don't really support the English rugby team, I tend to support the Welsh rugby team or even the New Zealand rugby team uh, because I kind of think that rugby, the English rugby team is quite... Um, Southern. <laughs> so what I'm really saying is that our identities are complex and much better than listening to somebody like Theresa May, we should listen to Nelson Mandela. Uh, so Nelson Mandela said, the time will come when our nation will honour the memory of all the sons, the daughters, the mothers, the fathers, the youth and the children who by their thoughts and deeds gave us the right to assert with pride that we are South Africans that we are Africans and that we are citizens of the world. That's a more mature understanding of belonging because we belong to lots of different things and belonging is really important. And so what citizenship gives us is a way of belonging, which is really important. The second thing that uh, citizenship gives us is, is rights. Sometimes people say equal rights, which is kind of true. Um, but it's much more than that. Um, 
rights are really the means by which we um, support each other to take our place in society. Rights and the rule of law and the systems of government and the, all the arrangements we create um, enable us to live safely, to live well, to get on with each other. That's part of what citizenship is really. It's part of, it's a structure of laws and social arrangements uh, of which rights are a central part, um, which enables human beings to flourish. If you think about um, why people flee countries, um, yes, they're fleeing from war very often. They're fleeing from economic crises. And what, but what they're fleeing to is, is to some better form of citizenship. That's what people are seeking, quite understandably. And what we want is a world where people don't have to do that because everywhere people can trust the rule of law, everywhere people are safe and well and, and peace reigns, um, everywhere citizenship is possible. Um, we often, uh, particularly since after World War II, the, the emphasis has been on human rights. Um, but of course, the challenge is to make those rights real in our political and legal and social arrangements. It's, it's not enough to have a human right if your society isn't organised to make that right real. And um, one of the great philosophers of the uh, 20th century was Hannah Arendt and she, she explored this issue and also explored the causes of the Holocaust and World War II and the disasters that we, that we saw in the middle of the 20th century, which were, which were disasters um, which she, she saw as really the way in which society turned against itself and turned against its, and the weakest members of that society the society. Famously, of course, Jews, many of them refugees, fleeing revolution and war elsewhere, then became subject to prejudice and discrimination in Germany. And then that led uh, to uh, increased anti-Semitism and, and all the horrors that flowed from that. Um, but as Hannah Arendt and others have observed, what is not sufficiently well understood, the Holocaust actually began with the attacks on disabled people and people with mental illness who were in institutions and which and who Hitler ordered to be um, murdered and which doctors and nurses in those systems continued to murder even after the um, orders had been ended. And uh, this quote here, which I've put together with a much more recent tragic photo, uh, is by Hannah Arendt talking about the status of refugees the comity of European peoples, the ability of European peoples to, to live together in harmony and to respect each other. It went to pieces when and because it allowed its weakest members to be excluded and persecuted. So it's about respecting rights, but rights is really about respecting the people with the least power. That's what rights are useful for, ensuring that people who are most likely to be disrespected, most likely to be oppressed, have the power to push back, to be strong and to live a decent life. So citizenship is about having those rights and making those rights real. The third thing about citizenship is that it gives us the ability to be free And this has always been a critical part of citizenship. And I was thinking about this idea in, um, in relation to the talk today, and I was reminded of a, of a kind of a very famous passage from um, ancient literature, which comes from, I mean, this book here is uh, by Herodotus, who's the first ever historian and he, he wrote a book which described the ancient world two and a half thousand years ago or a bit longer, the developments in Athens, the developments in Greece, the developments in Persia, the war between Persia and Greece. 
Um, and there's a really fascinating passage in this, which is, is probably not describing accurately what uh, happened, but purports to describe um, the decision in Persia about what the future form of government should be in Persia. And there's this debate between uh, the uh, most powerful people in Persia about whether Persia should become a democracy, an oligarchy, or a monarchy. And um, one of the characters here says, um, I think it's best that we no longer be ruled by one of ourselves as a monarch, since that kind of government is neither pleasant nor good. Uh, and he goes on to say, the rule of the majority, however, not only has the most beautiful and powerful name of all, equality, but in practice, the majority does not act at all like a monarch. Indeed, the majority chooses its magistrates by lot. It holds all of these officials accountable to an audit and it refers all resolutions to the authority of the public. I therefore propose that we abandon monarchy and raise the majority to a ruling position, for in the many is the whole. Uh, why am I going back two and a half thousand years? But this idea of democracy um, is really the idea that we should be free and free because we decide what the rules are. We control society. Uh, and opposed to that idea is the idea of us not as citizens, but as subjects, subjects of a king, or the other alternative is subjects of an oligarchy. What's an oligarchy? It's not a word we use very much, but basically it's, a, it's like an aristocracy or a meritocracy those group of people who decide that they're the best and they, they, in a group, will control the rest of us. It's worth thinking about this today because do we live in a democracy? Um, I'm not sure we do. I think that it would be best to think of what we live in today as a more closer to an oligarchy. There's a small number of people uh, politicians, we do get to choose them, but oligarchies, that, that system of oligarchies is how they were organised in the ancient world. You would choose between different groups and you would have the one group rule over you rather than another, but it was really that group that was in control. Um, so the idea of citizenship is about freedom, it's about democracy, it's about us all taking control of society and being free and setting our own rules. Um, but arguably, it's not something that we really live in, the idea of democracy today. And so what citizenship also does is give us a challenge to create truly democratic societies. This slipperiness of control is part of what we've, um, we know from the experiences of people with disabilities. A lot of my work has been focused on uh, trying to challenge the way the system, the bureaucracy, takes control of people's lives. Um, a few years ago, or back in the early 90s, I came up with this idea of comparing the professional gift model of services to a citizenship model of services, and that's reflected in this image. On one side, you can see that, you know, services can be organised by us paying taxes to government and government giving that money to professionals or others who will then provide services which we then receive. Um, people have decided how those services should work for us. And for things that are of marginal importance, I don't know, you know, working out how broadband works or how your gas system is delivered, maybe, maybe fuel and energy and these things having the, a fixed system from above is not too bad. But for people with disabilities, if you find that your housing, your relationships, your job, everything you do with your day is basically decided for you by an institution or a service that's been organised for you in your best interest, supposedly, what you've really done is lost your freedom. So the challenge uh, for people with disabilities, but for many other groups, has been to say, well, we do need resources, we do need support even, but we want to be in control of that. We want to have freedom. So citizenship is about being uh, free.
and about having um, control over how the rules are set. Um, citizenship is also, interestingly, about having a really good life. Citizenship is a responsibility, but it's also a responsibility to make the best of yourself. Um, it's a responsibility to take on, uh, build a life for yourself, which is meaningful for you. Citizens don't live lives according to other people's idea of what's important. Citizens lead lives in accordance with what's important to themselves. Um, and this idea um, has been important for me too. I, um, a few years ago, I wrote a book called The Keys to Citizenship, which, um, and uh, with my friend Wendy Perez, uh, we developed that idea a little bit further. And so over the last few years, we've been talking about the seven keys to citizenship. And that's pictured in this kind of graphic here. And, and what that's really saying is that if you think about how citizenship works, actually at the heart of it is the need to have a life of meaning. I say meaningful for you. To make that life become real, you also need freedom. You need some resources. You need a place where you belong. Uh, you need some assistance, but assistance that you can control. You need to be part of the community and part of the life of the community. And you need uh, fundamentally and always the most important part of life is you need love um, and um, so this notion of citizenship is something that's something we can think about as a way of thinking about our own lives and it's also something we should think about when we are supposedly trying to offer people help and assistance because if our help and assistance isn't helping people build good lives then what is it doing how can we be doing helping people well, if at the same time we're lowering their control over their own lives, if we're lowering their own ability to lead a life that's meaningful for them, or to develop the resources that give them uh, status and respect in the community. So citizenship is a, is a goal for ourselves. Um, uh, it's something that is also available to everyone. Part of the purpose of the book was to show that for people with intellectual disabilities, citizenship is completely possible. Um, yes, maybe some people need some assistance making decisions, but that's something we know we can do something about. We can help people in the right way so that they can uh, still be in control of their own lives. Uh, we can make resources available in the right way so that people can have flexibility to build a life that makes sense to them you know, in the community they need to be. So we know how to do these things, uh, but there's still many, many people who are, who are not, not being allowed to live lives of full citizenship. Um, and there are many, many wealthy, rich people who are leading empty lives that are not lives of citizenship. So this isn't just about, um, it's not the rich who define what citizenship is, it's not the powerful who define what citizenship. Citizenship is something that we do together and is available to all of us. The other thing about citizenship and it, is that I think it gives us an idea of what it means to be um, included, to be truly part of a community as an equal. Um, again, this is something that you hear when you go back in time and listen to uh, the ancient Greeks think about citizenship. It's also some, a theme you can find in the Bible and in other uh, ancient literature, which is the notion that what we're trying to do is really welcome each other as equals. That there are barriers to seeing each other as equals. There are labels, there are walls, um, but we can overcome those. As a beautiful a uh, quote here, which I'll read. Um, a rabbi asked his students how they could tell when the dawn had come and morning prayers could be said. One student responded by saying, when you can see the sheep on the hill, 
A mother suggested that one can tell that the dawn had come when a, when a person is able to distinguish between a fig tree and a grapevine. Uh, no, said the wise one. It is dawn when you can look into the faces of human beings and you have enough light within you to recognise them as your sisters and brothers. So I think citizenship gives us an ideal for inclusion. Citizenship means that we can be different and welcomed in as an equal. Uh, I think that's one of the most beautiful things about citizenship. We can be different and equal. In fact, in a way you can't but be different if you're a true citizen. I mean, citizens are people leading meaningful, unique lives of value. Uh, they're not drones, they're not robots, they're not subject-gated entities. <laughs> they're not all part of the matrix. We're free, we're different, we are each unique. And yet we can treat each other with respect. And yet we can choose to treat each other as equals. We can recognize that each person has that absolute un value as an equal human being. The other reason I think that um, citizenship is really important, and this sounds like a funny way of putting it, but it, we need citizenship if we're gonna save the planet. We're in a severe ecological crisis, which, which is not only damaging the environment, not only down, increasing global temperatures, um, it's leading to species extinction and it's threatening the uh, very existence of human beings themselves. How are we going to do anything about that? Well, we have to take responsibility, don't we? I mean, we, if we just sit here and wait for somebody else to solve these problems, why do we believe that's going to work? I mean, one of the most inspiring people in the last few years has been um, a super citizen, Greta Thunberg. Um, I mean, Greta Thunberg, who's a young woman, uh, I think she also has, has a disability, Asperger's syndrome. Um, she has made this very simple point that if we do not each take responsibility, campaigning responsibility, but also practical responsibility for trying to change our own lives, change our own homes, make the world um, carbon neutral, uh, everything will go to hell. So we, we need to be citizens in order to save the planet. And the last thing is that we need to be citizens if we're gonna learn how to do things differently. We need to be citizens to work together to do things differently. One of the problems I think is that we constantly expecting solutions to be delivered by some kind of power when actually we know a lot of what the problems are and we know what a lot of the solutions are, but we don't ourselves behave as if that it's our responsibility to share learning, to make a difference. So citizens do a really simple fundamental thing. They cooperate, they work together. That's one of the reasons why we created Citizen Network. What we wanted to do was start to encourage people to not look upwards for solutions, but to look outwards for solutions. What we wanted to do was help people make it easier to cooperate, share information, share good ideas, get people working in partnership. So the whole of Citizen Fest is a kind of model of what we think the future should look like. It's a world where we can just share our good stuff and um, begin to make the changes we need. So really, that's what I want to end on. I mean, citizenship is something that's essential. It's something that's fun, it's brilliant. At some level, it's kind of easy, though each of us has got to uh, find the right way of being a citizen for us. Um, but if that sounds good to you, why don't you come and join us in Citizen Network? Thanks.